now, coming to you live from Modesto, California, I'm Hannah Bradford, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Hour, a program dedicated to promoting mental health. Ooh. Welcome to what? Oh, Ethan, you scared me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> welcome to what? It's my YouTube channel. Oh, is it on? Are we on? <laughs> it's called the Mental Wellness Hour. Ethan in the house. What's up, America? Wait. The what? <laughs> the Mental Wellness Hour. It's about promoting mental health. And you could talk about that for an hour? I'm gonna try. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Uh, Ethan! Yes! Oh! <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think people will watch my YouTube channel? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you two up to? Diego, you scared me. You have to be careful. She scares easily. Hey, uh, no, I don't. You shouldn't sneak up on people. We're talking about Hannah's YouTube channel. <laughs> Hannah has a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. It's called the Mental Wellness Hour? We're not on, are we? <laughs> What's it about? It's about mental health. See, there's physical health where you take care of your body. You know, exercise and eat right so you don't get sick. And then there's also mental health, where you take care of your mind so you can, you know, feel better. You can talk about that for an hour. Yes, because there are things, mental health challenges, that I've had to deal with in the past that were difficult. I want other people to understand. You want other people all up in your business? Uh-uh. No way, girlfriend. Yeah, why should we listen to that? Because I want people to understand that anyone can experience a mental health challenge. But if people know your personal business, they can be mean and they can be cruel. Yeah, uh, they can say things about you and you don't want that. Well, I don't want people to be afraid to talk about mental health challenges. A person with a mental health challenge shouldn't be scared of what others will say. But what if other people are afraid of you? What if they say you're crazy? This is really important. Most people who experience mental health challenges are not any more likely to be violent than anyone else. There's nothing to be afraid of. The only reason people say mean things is because they don't understand. Oh, so you want people to feel sorry for you. <laughs> no. I want other people to understand. <laughs> don't feel sorry for me. I don't want sympathy. Just give me understanding and some empathy. If you really want to know me, take a walk in my shoes. Take a walk. walk. Take a walk in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes. Nothing to be afraid of. There is a myth, there is fact, and the way we interact. There's false, there's truth, if you didn't know that, well, well now you do. When you learn, you're in life. You'll, You'll be, be brave, brave whenever, whenever fight. Where it's cloudy now, it's clear, where there's hope, there's no fear. Take a walk in our shoes, and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes, nothing to be afraid of. Take a walk in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes, nothing to be afraid of. Take a walk in our shoes. Welcome to A Walk in Our Shoes, our YouTube channel about promoting mental health. Okay, so what does that mean? Oh, okay, so health is the way your body feels and works. And when your body feels good, you feel good. You're able to go to school, hang out with your friends, and do the things you need to do every day. Mental health means having good ways to deal with your feelings and cope with the everyday stresses of life. A healthy mind lets you learn, play, and do the things you need to do. Everyone has good days and bad days. A bad day doesn't mean that you have a mental challenge, but everyone can still improve on their mental health. Having a healthy mind and body are both very important. I know this from my own experience. My name is Hannah, and this is my story. I like to sing. Sometimes I make up songs, melodies. I don't always remember them because I'm making them up as I'm thinking. My songs are what my thinking sounds like. Sometimes someone will ask, 
hey, Hannah, what are you thinking? And I'll say, oh, you know, la, 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 la. But my thinking didn't always sound like that. And I didn't always love to sing. Mama. You see, I had problems. I grew up as the middle child in between two perfect siblings. I only started learning to sing to keep up with them. were more talented than me. They were smarter than me. A. A plus. F. <clears throat> F. They were better than me. First prize. First place. Loser at everything. Class president. Most popular. I felt invisible. Hey, raise your hand if you have siblings. Go ahead. Do they compete with you? Yes. <laughs> Do you compete with them? Yes. That can lead to problems at home. Problems with parents. You see, my father and mother had very high standards of success. Is that the best you can do? Why can't you be more like your brother and sister? La, la, la. Oh, you're grounded. grounded. No internet. No car. No cell phone. No Netflix. No Pokemon Go. You're just lazy. What's wrong with you? Ugh. Do you have parents or guardians pressuring you to do better? Yes. Wow. See, you know what it's like to walk in my shoes. And I know what it's like to walk in yours. What was different for me was how I reacted to the pressure. It was like the music went from simple and soothing to chaotic and loud. Sometimes I felt isolated and depressed. I felt sad and I wanted to be left alone. But other times, I felt impulsive and hyperactive. My thoughts and feelings racing out of control. I felt like, like a pendulum, constantly swinging back and forth and back and forth from one extreme to the next. It was a feeling I had no control over. It was like the music was playing me. What made it even worse were the labels. People calling me names like weirdo, weirdo or crazy, crazy or loser. Feeling labeled can make it hard for someone like me to ask for help. And that made my home life even more stressful. I'm worried about Hannah. She only does this for attention, which is exactly what you give her. Oh, you're too hard on her. Oh, that's right. Blame me. This is all my fault. I didn't say this was anyone's fault. What are we supposed to do? I think she needs professional help. Her problem is that you let her get away with everything. I'm going to find someone to help us. All of us. Why can't she more like her brother and sister? Why should they suffer because of her? Oh, come on. Hannah, I want you to see a doctor. A doctor? What for? Just like you would see a doctor if you had the flu or if you broke your arm, except this doctor's a mental health specialist. Why? Do you think I'm crazy too? No, I just think you need help. I just want to be left alone. Hannah, do it for me, for all of us. So I went. That's where I was diagnosed with bipolar, bipolar disorder. disorder. That sounds pretty scary. It's nothing to be afraid of or ashamed of. 
Bipolar disorder is a mental health challenge that changes the way people feel emotions. What do you mean? Well, when someone is diagnosed with bipolar disorder, her emotions can swing from happy to sad. She can go from being very cheerful with lots of energy to very sad and tired. Just like me. Living with bipolar disorder can be very tiring and stressful because people don't know why their feelings are changing and don't know how to control them. Just like me. I'm here to help you get better. And you should know it isn't your fault. Nothing you did caused this problem. It isn't contagious, and there is nothing to be afraid of. The good thing is that you're reaching out for help. You're not responsible for having a problem, but you're taking responsibility for getting better. What a relief. I got the treatment I needed, and today, I feel better. I'm not defined by my diagnosis. I'm many things. I'm a daughter and a sister and a friend. And I sing. And you have your own YouTube channel. <laughs> Which is awesome. I cannot believe you just spilled your guts to a bunch of randos. No offense. <laughs> Why? You're not afraid to talk about it when you have a cold, are you, Daniela? No. Why should I be? Ethan, when you broke your hand, were you afraid to ask for help? No, I wiped out pretty good. <laughs> so you went to a doctor. And you're not embarrassed for us to see your brace, oh, are you? Oh, no, it's actually kind of awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you supposed to be riding? Maybe. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you know someone who has a mental health challenge, or if you have one, don't be afraid to ask for help. Remember, you are not to blame for having a mental health challenge, but there are things you can do to help yourself feel better. Together, we can break down the stigma by learning and sharing the truth about mental health. <laughs> Alrighty, so what is stigma? Stigma. Stigma is a hurtful label given to someone who might be different from other people. Some people give mean labels to others because of a disability. Or the color of their skin. Or the way they look. Or the way they act. People with mental health challenges can experience stigma, too. Like me. My name is Ethan, and this is my story. Some people wonder why I skateboard. Some say things like... Because you're crazy. Because you're mental. <laughs> I'm not so sure I like those labels, but whatever. I love the feeling I get when I'm screaming down the pavement. I feel dialed in, focused, good. Here he goes. Yeah! Oh! 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 Man. Oh! 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 Oh, 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 no! Oh, oh, man! You fall down, you get back up. You get scraped, you get bruised, and you wrap it up. And you get back at it. It hurts, but it's worth it. Because you're going to get it right, eventually. I I'm not watching this. Yeah, Tell, okay. me Tell me when it's over! Tell me when it's over! Finally get a move right, and you're doing something you can never do before, and you're just like, yes! yes! <laughs> just, so you can't cool. be afraid of falling, or getting hurt. You can't be afraid. The worst times is just, the only thing that really scares me is the things I can't see. Like the cracks in the pavement, 
The worst times are when something happens I don't see coming. Oh. School can be a lot like those big cracks. Oh. Oh. I struggle with attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD, which can make it really hard to focus. Like the cracks in the pavement, my emotions can surprise me. And getting Who's labeled her? emo. Hey. Emo. Nothing hurts like that. That's the kind of hurt that stays with you. The kind of hurt you think will never, ever heal. That's when a part of me thinks it's impossible to get back up. Because I'm just going to fall, fail again. Why get up? Why bother? Now we see the emo in his native habitat. Emo. Hello? Hello? Okay, don't say anything at all. Just be like, hey, look at me. I'm so emo. I don't speak. I'm so... Stupid! <laughs> <laughs> How do you think they communicate anyway, emos? Do you just stare at each other? Yeah, do you have like an emo off? <laughs> First one to talk is a loser. <laughs> But, how could you be more of a loser than you already are? That's not funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Unless you're an emo. Then nothing's funny. <laughs> That's disrespectful and hurtful. You shouldn't say things like that. What are you, his mom? Another emo, his memo. <laughs> I'm a friend. He has friends? Who oh, no. It's okay. Oh. M. G. The emo speaks. Oh. No, it's not okay. It's not okay for them to talk to you like that, and it's not okay for me to stand by and say nothing. Whatever. We'll leave you two alone. Hey, hey. Emo and Nemo sitting in a tree. <laughs> K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Thanks. No problem. I know how it feels. Really? Yeah, it happens to me too. I used to hide all my feelings inside, thinking I was the only one. Yeah, exactly. So what's really going on? Oh, wow. That looks familiar. It's not like I don't try, or that I don't care. It's just, it's really hard to focus. <laughs> Tell me about it. <clears throat> you know, you can get help for this. Really? What do I do? If you're having a hard time concentrating, there are people like doctors, counselors, parents, and others who can help you. And as for the math, there are teachers and tutors and friends who can help you. Friends like who? Well, like me. I'm Hannah. Ethan. Hi. Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> I, I used to have a really hard time with math, but now I'm OK, and I'm getting better. <laughs> and you help me? Sure. Helping you helps me. I need the practice. OK. Hey, I just want to let you know that you're not alone. You're not the only one. It's totally okay to talk about things that are bothering you. Thanks. In that scene, we saw how labeling emo, emo can hurt. But what if things had been different? What if these two had walked in Ethan's shoes? Hey, look at that guy. He looks upset. Oh man, what's wrong? Oh, it looks like he got a bad grade on that test. Oh man, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, and then you go home and you show your parents. Oh man, showing your parents, that's the worst. Yeah, you show your parents and then you get grounded. Oh man, not grounded, I hate being grounded. We all do, my friend, it's just the way it is. They shouldn't do that to kids, they shouldn't give us tests. Why do they do that? It's a mandate. <gasps> They shouldn't give us tests! It's too much pressure! Well, now you know how he feels. Let's go talk to him. Hold on! I need a minute. Okay. Hey, you look upset. Yeah, man, sorry about your test. What? How did you know? Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? I don't want to talk about it. It might make you feel better. Yeah. I have a hard time concentrating. If you need help, all you have to do is ask. Of oh, thanks. Sure, anytime. Cool. <laughs> See? A kind word doesn't hurt. 
Walking in someone else's shoes can make a big difference. Ah, oh, boots and cats and 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 boots and cats. Oh, Ethan, look out! Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, what happened to your hand? Oh, this? I learned a new trick on my skateboard. Oh, I love the skateboard! Oh, we should ride together sometime. I'm not very good and I fall down a lot. <laughs> we all do. What helps me to focus is listening to music. Oh, I like to listen to Macklemore. I like Jake Cole. Elton John. Barbara Streisand. Uh, who's Come that? Down. She's great. Oh, boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. Wait, how do you do that? It's beatboxing. All you say is boots and cats. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Oh yeah! Cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Well, nope. you ruined that. It's a really nice try. Thanks. <laughs> Whoa, hey guys. What's up? Look at all the views. Great, the whole world's watching. Oh, check out all the comments. Um, it takes a lot of courage to talk about mental health challenges. Yeah. yeah. Watching this makes me want to get better. Wow. wow. Oh, look at this one. I have the same shirt as Daniela. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> oh. What is it? Listen, Hannah, thank you for your YouTube channel. I feel so lost and scared and intensely sad. I think I might have an eating disorder. I'm so, I'm so afraid of getting fat that I don't want to eat. And when I do eat, I feel guilty and anxious and when I look in the mirror, all I see is fat me. I don't know who else to talk to about this. What should I do? Is there hope for me? Signed, lost, and scared. Ugh, I don't know that much about eating disorders. I do. What? I know something about eating disorders. You do? Yeah. No one is understanding. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope. You are not alone. It can get better. My experience will tell you so. My name is Daniela. And this is my story. For me, it all started when I was 10 years old. I moved to a new school, and I didn't know anybody. I was the new kid. And I was so afraid that I wasn't going to make any friends. Who's that? I heard there's a new kid in school. That must be her. If you've ever been the new kid in school, then you know how scary it can be. Who are you? I'm new. Duh. We know that. What's your name? Daniela. Daniela? What kind of name is that? It was my great-grandmother's name. <laughs> what was so great about her? Wait, you have a used name? Can you think of one yourself? <laughs> my parents picked it. They didn't ask me. Oh, whatever. whatever. What are we supposed to call you? Dan. Danny. <laughs> Danny L. Ella. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in my old school just called me Daniela. Oh yeah? Well, you're not in Kansas anymore. Danny, Dan, Dan, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from Kansas. Whatever. Whatever. Use name. Kansas. New kid. And that's when I heard it. She's kind of fat. Yeah, she's a little chubby. She kind of looks like a Snorlax. <gasps> or Miss Piggy. Snorlax! <laughs> Fat? Am I really? Maybe they were right. I couldn't control my name, and I couldn't control where I was from, but I could control what I ate. And if they didn't like me because I was fat, then I was going to do something about it. Daniela, breakfast is ready. I'm not hungry. Not hungry? 
That's not like you. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, you have a healthy appetite. Are you feeling okay? I don't want anything. How was your first day of school? I'm fat. Did somebody say something to you? Well, they said I was fat. Am I? Eat. You'll feel better. I made pancakes your favorite. I am, aren't I? Aren't I? You are my daughter. And I love you just the way you are. You should just ignore them. <laughs> my mom was right. I should have ignored them. But I couldn't. And I started lying about eating. At home. <clears throat> Finished. Do you want some more? No, thanks. I'm full. Have a good day. <laughs> and I started lying about eating at school. I obsessed about food. Calories, calories, calories! Oh, fat. Hey, Daniela, you gonna eat your sandwich? No, I had a big breakfast. Do you have dessert? I'm saving it for later. Oh. That wasn't true. I wasn't eating. I was constantly weighing myself, and no matter how much weight I lost, go! Oh, I always felt I needed to lose more. And people started to notice. What's up with Daniela? Just a few more pounds. She doesn't look right. And then I'll have friends who like me. Hey, Daniela. Looks like you've lost a lot of weight. No, I haven't. Are you feeling OK? I feel fine. OK, if you say so. That was a lie. I didn't feel fine. I felt weak and tired, and I didn't have any energy because I wasn't eating. I was starving myself. I thought I was in control, but I was really out of control. My eating disorder had become me. If I got better, then who would I be? Would anyone care, or would I disappear? But you didn't. Thanks to my mom, who took me to see a mental health professional who specializes in healthy eating. I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. What's that? It's an eating disorder that causes the person to obsess about their weight and how much they eat. Well, it sounds like you learned a lot. Probably the most important thing I learned is that there's no one answer for what causes an eating disorder. I learned to stop blaming myself, and I realized that I could take responsibility for getting better. I'm glad you got the help you needed. Me too. It took a while and a lot of work, but the new me, the healthy me, the real me was finally able to emerge. I'm so much more today. I like to draw. I like going to the movies. Have you seen Frozen? Oh, God. <laughs> I like to hang out with all my friends. Do you want to build a snowman? No. OK, okay. bye. <laughs> and I like me. I like me. Such a simple thing to say, but it wasn't always true. I was hiding. I'm feeling like I'm so much more today. So, if you think you have a problem with healthy eating, or if you know someone who might have a problem, don't be afraid to ask for help. You're not alone. Walk in our shoes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at this. A lot of people have had problems with mental health. Famous people, like uh, President Abraham Lincoln, and even Demi Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> even if you don't know it, you probably already know a person with a mental health challenge. It could be a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a classmate, or even a teacher. We have so many things that make us who we are, like singing. Or, <laughs> or skateboarding. skateboarding. <laughs> a mental illness doesn't define a person. But when we don't understand how life is in other people's shoes, we can make unfair and untrue assumptions. Those assumptions Kalisa labels like crazy, or mental, or emo, and that's not cool. Uh, labeling can also lead someone to think that everyone with a mental illness 
is violent. But this isn't true. Trust me, I know something about labeling. It's just, I don't know if I want to talk about it. Oh, yeah, go on. ahead, Diego. Well, it's just, it's not about me, but it affects my family. If it affects your family, it affects you too, Diego. Yeah, I guess you're right. My name is Diego, and this is my story. Well, to be specific, it's the story of my uncle Esteban. He was, uh, he was in the military, and he just got back from serving overseas. He and my mom are brother and sister, and when he was finally coming home, I couldn't wait to see him. I was just so ex... Oh, Tio Esteban! Diego! <laughs> you look good, amigo! You too! Hey, do you want to play some football? I want to show you some of my new moves. Oh. Not now, Diego. Oh, come on, get Maybe to later. To Tio needs to rest. Hey, Mom? Is Theo Esteban okay? We don't want anyone knowing he's back till he feels better. But, Mom, just... you need to leave your Theo alone. So I left him alone like my mom asked, but, you know, that was really hard for me because he is like my best friend. I mean, he was the one who taught me how to play football when I was a kid. Hey, Diego, get a school of football? Claro que sí, tío. ¿Qué es esto? ¿Eso es un fútbol? Tú sabes, los Niners, los Raiders, tú dijiste que querías jugar fútbol. No, 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 este es un fútbol. Ah. Esto es un fútbol. Ah. ¿Y ahora qué? ¿Qué estás haciendo? Tú no lo coges, nunca usas tus manos. A menos que estás de portero. Mira. Sí, bueno, todo necesita practicar. Gracias, tío. Esto fue muy divertido. ¿Quién sabe? Quizá tú serás el próximo Lionel Messi. ¿Quién? <laughs> Tienes mucho que aprender, mi amigo. And he was always coming over for dinner. Mmm, something smells delicious. Esteban, stay for dinner. If you insist. I insist. <laughs> he and my mom are really close. Uh, nothing like me and my sister, though. She gets on my nerves. <clears throat> oh, let me see. What are you doing? Who's Sheila? Give me that. Mom! Diego yelled at me. Diego, leave your sister alone. What's for dinner? Chicken and rice. I'm a vegetarian. No, no you're, you're not. not. Go do your homework. Dinner will be ready soon. Are you kidding? <sighs> Diego, how was your day? I don't want to talk about it. Hey, Diego. He always knew when something was wrong. Let's go fishing. Fishing? Oh, but mom, please. Dinner will be ready please, soon. Please. So we'll have fish. Please. Let's go. Oh, all right. You know, we never really caught anything. But whatever it was that was bothering me, it just didn't seem so bad anymore. Talking to him always made me feel better. Hey, Diego. I have something to tell you. Uh, what is it? I have to go away for a while. Where to? Overseas. For how long? At least a year. But that's so long and so far away. Don't go. It's my job. It's a privilege to be a part of something that protects people, that helps people. I'm just afraid something bad might happen to you. We're military. We look out for each other, just like you and me. But you don't know what's... Don't worry. The good guy always wins, right? You know, who am I going to talk to? about whatever. Please don't go away. Please don't. Please don't go away. I just want you to stay. Please. 
please don't go away. I'm gonna miss you. Take care of your mother and sister. And don't sit around too much. Keep practicing while I'm away. You need it. They do. Please stay here. Here at home. Don't go. Don't leave me alone. And so he left. And he would send emails and photos when he could, but you know, he would tell me to not be afraid. But I was always kind of scared for him. And we didn't hear back from him until he came back home. And then when he came back, he went to the hospital a few times a week. And I never knew why until one night. Hey, Nigel, the Esteban, the Big Dipper, you see? Yeah. You know, over there, on clear nights, you can see the Milky Way so bright that you cast a shadow on the ground, even if there's no moon. Are you okay? I know you've been worried about me. Well, it's just I know something's going on, but I don't see anything wrong with you. I was diagnosed with PTSD. What's that? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes if you see or live through something very scary, you can keep feeling afraid even after the scary part is over. Is that normal? Everyone feels afraid sometimes. But you're home now, you're safe. People with PTSD can keep feeling afraid even if there's nothing to be afraid of. They can have bad dreams that seem real or think of something bad that's gonna happen again. Will you always be like this? I know PTSD is not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm getting the help I need. That's something I can take responsibility for. So I go to therapy once a week. It's what I need to get better. We love you, Theo. I know, and that helps me to love myself again so that I, I can recover. If there's anything I can do, let me know, okay? Maybe tomorrow you can show me those new moves. All right, I will. <laughs> hey. <laughs> My uncle's going to therapy, and with the support and help of his family and friends, I know that he can lead a full and healthy life. How is he now? Better. He's coming to my soccer match next week. That's awesome. So does post-traumatic stress disorder only affect military personnel? No. It can happen to anyone, even kids. Wow. It can happen when you're in an accident uh, or in a traumatic event or when you're the victim of a violent crime. Wow. I didn't know that. I've learned so much today about mental health. Thank you for sharing your stories. I learned that it's okay to talk about mental health challenges. And it's okay to ask people how they're doing and feeling because it shows them that you care. If you're having a hard time, find an adult you trust to talk to. If you aren't sure what to say or do, try writing down what you're thinking and what's going on, and then give that note to someone who cares about you. You know, telling someone is a good and healthy step towards getting better. Your mind and your body are connected. So in order to stay healthy, things like eating healthy foods, drinking plenty of water, and exercise are important. Everyone experiences challenges, and it's nice to know that you're not alone, and that everyone goes through the same things. <laughs> A brother, a son, a daughter, and, and a friend, friend to, to you. you. Take a walk in our shoes. You learn, you're enlightened. You'll be brave, we're never frightened. Where it's cloudy, now it's clear. Where there's hope, there's no fear. Take a walk in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes. Nothing to be afraid of. Take a walk in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes. Walk, walk, take a walk in our shoes. Walk, walk, take a walk. Take a walk. Take a walk.
in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes, nothing to be afraid of. Take a walk in our shoes and see what we're made of. Take a walk in our shoes.